Hello, my name is Peter West, and today I'm going to look at the UBR LTE Prime. This is an industrial router, and it's quite amazing for what it does and the price point. This is a dual cellular LTE Cat4 router. It just offers a really neat set of features for its price point and its size. So let's dig into this thing and see what's in the box. Open the box. I've got a a 12 volt power, but beware, it's not that it's not the normal 12 volt power, it's that that square plug. Um, so it's a four pin 12 volt power. I've got a US uh, GPS cable, and I've got my antennas. Now this one is gonna uh, gonna come with uh, four cellular antennas and two Wi-Fi antennas. And if I stack these antennas on top of each other, you'll see the Wi-Fi antennas are a little bit bigger. So my four Wi-Fi antennas. I've got my four cellular antennas. I've got my little rubber feet. And then I have the UBR. So the UBR, this is a, a kind of a, a neat little router. And, and I think if anybody's paying attention to this, you'll see why. We have a single WAN port. We have dual cellular LTE, Wi-Fi, and GPS. It means you can put this as a vehicle at a low cost dual cellular solution for like a police car, an ambulance, um, but also industrial and IOT applications. Uh, and so we have our 12 volt power uh, input here. And then you also have the four, four prong uh, 12 volt power for your, for your AC adapter. And then we have our SIM card slots out here on the side. So let's go ahead and dig into this router and the setup and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So this is gonna use the larger of the three sizes. So the, it's 2FF. So you can see here I've got my AT&T and my T-Mobile um, uh, SIM cards. Uh, they're the 2FF, they're the larger of the three sizes. And then I can put my AT&T in slot 1A sizes. So if I put my T-Mobile in slot 2A, the B slot is a backup slot. So B for backup. Um, and so what that means is you actually have four SIM card capable, but the B slot is a failover to the A slot. So if you have AT&T with a 10 gig plan and AT&T with a 10 gig plan, and now you have 20 gigs on, on SIM card one, or AT&T and Verizon. So when AT&T has less than two bars of service, failover to Verizon. So you can either have redundant of the same carrier or redundant different carriers for like better connectivity or capability options. So for example, I have AT&T and T-Mobile, but we could add two Verizons here. They're a little bit more expensive, but failover for if, if T-Mobile or AT&T is unavailable. When I come to the front here, I've got my Wi-Fi A, my Wi-Fi B, so that's your Wi-Fi mod modem. Then I have my four cellular. So let's go ahead and hook those up. Now, we're gonna talk about the antennas real fast because most people are gonna say, well, I wanna install this in a mobile platform, or I wanna install this in my, my vehicle, or I wanna install this um, maybe in a building and this is providing some resilient connectivity. This is a 120 megabits per second rated router. So it's gonna be great for, like I said, your, your branch office, your um, IoT platform, your industrial platform. It is certified for industrial and, and vibration. And then additionally, you're gonna get 20 megabits of encrypted speed fusion bonding throughput or 40 megabits of unencrypted or speed fusion cloud throughput. And so that's gonna give you the ability to run most IoT or industrial applications really well. Um, and that's gonna be the biggest thing you're gonna notice between like a, the UBR and the transit. UBR is rated for 20 or 40 megabits of bonding where and it's a category four modem versus the transit that's a category six modem or category 12 modem and is rated at 50 or 60 megabits of bonding throughput. Um, so, you know, much, much different there. Now, I am gonna say that this device is great for inside of a, a vehicle. And so I, I wanted to show you, we have the Mobility 40G, and this is the perfect antenna to pair with this router. And the reason is, it is big. So this, this guy goes on the roof. This is a beast of an antenna. I mean, it's massive. But we have four cellular high gain antennas. So here's your four cellular, two Wi-Fi, and GPS. This guy will work phenomenal on any mobile application that you have, or heck, put it on the L bracket that comes with it, or pole mount kit. You can mount this right to the side of your building, route to a pole, 
or put it right on on your vehicle with the included 3M tape. And I and I, I talk about that with my video about installing these in my uh, my Gladi Jeep Gladiator. So um, if you if you want to play around with a good antenna for this, grab the the Mobility 42G. That's going to give you four cellular, two Wi-Fi, and one GPS. Uh, per perfect for this little guy. Now, so I've got my AT&T and my T-Mobile SIM card connected. Um, I want to activate this guy and get him online and see what happens here. So we're going to plug in our, our 12 volt power. Now, you'll also notice uh, when you're if you're comparing this router to other routers like the BR1 or the Transit Duo, especially like the Transit Duo W, right? But the, the, the UBR has four LAN ports and one Ethernet WAN. So you can plug this into your cable modem or your DSL or your MPLS and have bonded cellular failover for your branch office, but you also have a four port switch. So as a technician or going out and setting up a quick hotspot for an infrastructure, uh, it's a great little device because once again, you have that four port switch built right in. Uh, the Transit Duo only has the two ports uh, and then the, some of the BR1 devices have the two or three ports. So you, you get more ethernet ports um, an Ethernet WAN for your, your hot failover, your bonding, and then, like I said, that dual cellular. So we got that turned on. I've got my SIM cards installed. And you can tell it's going to be on it. You'll see the red, the red light there, the, the status light. When that turns green, I know the router, router's booted up. And then I should see the cellular 1 and cellular 2 start flashing and then go solid. And so once that cellular 1 and cellular 2 are solid green, I know that I'm on the Internet. So I'm just going to wait for that to turn green, and I'm going to plug my laptop in and show you the admin console and how to program Speed Fusion Cloud. Look at that, she's green. Now, first and foremost, I do not need to plug my laptop in to program this. If I have an activated SIM card, in other words, T-Mobile activated, AT&T or Verizon activated, I can just turn this thing on, wait for the cellular to be connected, add the serial number to end control, and I'm, I'm good to go. Um, so I could program this completely without using an ethernet line. So the first thing I'm gonna do is show you an ethernet line plugin, and then I'm gonna um, show you how to add this device to end control. And you wanna make sure you plug into the LAN port, not the WAN port. Be nice to have it the right way. There we go. And then I should be able to put my laptop over here, and I should get an IP address. So let's, I'm gonna open up command line, just gonna do an IP config. And you can see right there, I got 192.168.50.1. Um, I'm going to go and turn off my wireless. So you right there, you can see the, my Ethernet's connected. Um, my IP address is 192.168.50.13, and the default gateway is 192.168.50.1. That is the default IP address of a UBR. So if I open up my browser and go to 192.168.50.1, it's going to bring me up with a little security warning page usually, and then load up the page. So once you get a login page, you're going to go to admin, admin. And then it's going to, and it's all lowercase, lowercase admin, lowercase admin. It's going to prompt you to change your password. And so you just type in admin again, and then whatever you want your password to be. Hit save and apply. And so when you log in, you're going to get your dashboard. And the dashboard's going to give you a, a, a quick visual of what you have connected. So we have our WAN. So we see priority one, highest WAN, no cable connected. Priority two, cellular one, cellular two, priority three, nothing. And then cellular four, Wi Fi WAN. You have four internet connections available here. You have an Ethernet WAN, two cellular WANs, and a Wi-Fi WAN. The priority groups tells you which route, which internet connections are active at the time. So if, you, if I plugged an Ethernet connection to WAN 1, then what's going to happen is these two SIM cards are going to go to standby state. And they'll only become active in the event that WAN 1 fails. So if you want WAN 1 and, WAN, and the cellular WANs to be working together for speed fusion, you need to drag your cellular WANs up into the priority and into the priority group. If you wanted to add Wi-Fi, you need to drag the Wi-Fi WAN. So there's two types of priority. One is your router priority, and then two is your speed fusion priority. And they are different. So you want to make sure if you want the fastest, most smooth failover, you want to make sure your internet connections are all in the same priority group, then use speed fusion configuration to prioritize which WANs are used, which I'll show you how to do in just a second. So now that I have all my internet connections in the same priority group, because I'm going to assume that I want to bond these, I need to make sure I, I have my internet connections connected. And you can see my T-Mobile connected right here. If you are by a new AT&T SIM card, it's white and blue, the 5G SIM cards, sometimes you might see it stuck on obtaining IP address. That is because AT&T bought out a bunch of SIM cards that belonged, like the, the numbers were kind of overlapping with another company. 
And so what we need to do is tell Peplink or tell the router that these are an AT&T SIM card. And the easiest way to do that is to click Details, scroll all the way down to Connection Settings, and you're going to see it says Operator Settings, Auto Custom. Click Custom, change this to Broadband, and then hit Save and Apply. And you're going to get that AT&T connection right away. Um, so if you do notice that your AT&T SIM cards are spinning at obtaining IP address, it's either it's not activated or it's the white and blue SIM card and needs uh, the broadband APN configured. So now that we have, have that fixed and that should go uh, into play, the next thing I want to do is I want to set up my Wi-Fi. The default Wi-Fi password is the last eight digits of the LAN MAC address. You can find that on the bottom of the unit or on the box that it comes with. And it's going to be all capitals with no uh, special characters like AA00BB11. The last eight digits, all capital of the LAN MAC address. But if you're plugged in, you can actually configure these settings yourself. And to do that, just go to AP and then you can click on the SSID and we could just say uh, Peter's. Uh, UBR, and then I can assign it a password, and then I can hit save and apply changes. And that is how easy it is to set up the Wi-Fi here. If I want to connect to uh, another Wi-Fi, I go back to the dashboard, and once I've enabled the Wi-Fi WAN and any of the priority groups other than disabled, so it can't be disabled, it could be one, two, or three. Then I can click Wireless Networks. It'll scan for Wireless Networks, and then I can hit just Connect right here. And then I just type in the password for the Wi-Fi, or if it's a guest Wi-Fi, you'll have to connect that. Now, there is something you should know about that. If you connect to a guest Wi-Fi that has a captive portal, that which means it has a splash page that one makes you type in, that wants you to click Accept. What you want to do is put Wi-Fi WAN in the priority one drag the other WANs down to priority two, so the Wi-Fi WAN is the only one active. That way, when you open up your laptop, it'll prompt you for the captive portal and let you connect in. Now we want to enable SpeedFusion Cloud. We want to bond this. So we're going to go to SpeedFusion Cloud. We're going to select Automatic, and then you can see SpeedFusion Cloud shows up right there. So you just go to SpeedFusion Cloud, choose your location, and then choose Automatic. Or you can choose your own if, uh, additional location if you want. And if I click SpeedFusion Cloud here, you can see I've got um, the different options. Um, so you can enable forward error correction if you're trying to do live streaming, or you can uh, enable WAN smoothing. When I only have two internet connections, I try to reserve bandwidth uh, for overhead. So if you enable WAN smoothing, for example, on two internet connections, one of your internet connections is going to be used for the smoothing, the parity bit, and the other internet is going to be used for your speed. So it's kind of like an N plus one in, in a sense right there. Um, and then Forward error correction uses a percentage, approximately 14% of the bandwidth is going to be consumed by parity information for, for forward error correction. But when in doubt, just leave those settings alone. Unless you know, like unless you need forward error correction or WAN smoothing for, for those features, um, don't enable them and then don't enable them both. Only enable one if you do need it. So additionally, um, you, you can now prioritize your internet connections. Remember I, earlier I told you the dashboard, you can have them in priority one, two, or three. Well, on SpeedFusion Cloud, you can too. So you see right here the priority one, one, one. That means these are all being bonded together. I can tell this router, say, hey, look, WAN one is my priority, and bond it with Wi-Fi or don't bond it. And then I can say cellular two is my second priority. Um, and so what this would do, it would bond WAN one and Wi-Fi, and those two are going to be active, and then the, the cellulars are not going to be active. What this means is that while you're even though it's the cellular one and two are active on the dashboard, they're actually not being used for bonding. And what this means is it's going to be faster failover. You're doing like voice applications, or you're doing streaming, or you're using uh, like mission critical applications. You might want that the failover from the Ethernet to the cellular to be super super fast. By keeping the dashboard enabled, you'll you'll use a little bit more bandwidth on like keep alive on the cellular, but you're going to have a faster transition. So you can set the priority right here in the WAN connection. Then you just hit save and you hit apply changes and then you can let that activate. So you hit save and apply, you're going to see it creating the tunnel right there. And so you can see it uh, creating tunnels. And now what's, so remember when I set it up, I set up WAN 1 and Wi-Fi as priority 1 and cellular 1 and 2 as the backup. 
So if I go to my status and I go to Speed Fusion and I click, you'll see Cellular 1 and 2 are actually in standby state and my Wi-Fi WAN is active. So the Cellular 1 and 2, even though they're active in the dashboard, they're not being used unless the Wi-Fi WAN were to fail. Now, to utilize Speed Fusion, you need to make sure you set up an outbound policy. So we're going to go to Advanced. We're going to go to Outbound Policy. This is where you do traffic shaping. You click Add Rule. We're going to say Bonding Speed Fusion Cloud. Speed Fusion Cloud. And then you're going to say Source Any, Destination Any. And then you're going to say Priority. And then Speed Fusion Cloud. Um, and what this does is it's traffic shaping policy that says, hey, I want all my internet to go out Speed Fusion Cloud instead of, um, a, a, instead of just standard load balancing. Now there are a lot of things to do. This is a generic rule that basically enables all of it. You can, you can actually say only a specific destination or a specific protocol uses Speed Fusion Cloud, um, but for the purposes of just a training video, I just want to make sure that people understand that you're not bonding until you create this policy. Then I always check this box when no connections are available, fail through the next rule. Just in case the Speed Fusion Cloud fails, make sure you go to your load balancing. And then this checkbox, Terminate Session on, on Connect Recovery, ensures that in the event that the Speed Fusion Cloud kicks in after the router boots up, which it will, and you've already started a session, it'll move that session over to the Speed Fusion Cloud. Hit Save, hit Apply Changes, and now I've set up a UBR with two internet connections, a Wi-Fi WAN, failover bonding, and I've configured my own access point. So I, I hope this video is useful for you, and if you have any questions, please reach out to us for support, and we'd be more than happy to help you. Thank you very much, and have a great day.